Hello guys, welcome to another video from Pete's Way. Uh, I'm your dog. I'm here with another video for you. Today um, I brought you a video how to approach a taxi. Okay, it's a very common uh, thing and very difficult. Uh, in neurology, some things can be tricky, but if you know no neurology, then it's one plus one is equal to two. So okay. So today our topic is how to approach a taxia okay uh, so before i proceed further uh, i would request you to please uh, hit the bell icon and subscribe to the youtube channel okay uh, this will be really helpful for me okay thank you so what is a taxia and how will you recognize it okay. so a taxia Whenever you uh, have a complaint, the mother complains that child is falling or is clumsy, okay, and has difficulty walking. So you must check his gait. Okay, gait. Now, in gait, how will you recognize that the child has a taxic gait? Okay, so this is a very important thing to recognize: a taxic gait. Three points which will tell you that this is a taxi gate number one the most important is the feeling of falling okay the child will feel that he is about to fall okay as he starts to walk he will feel that he is going to fall on one side on the other side okay so one thing is feeling of falling away number two it will be a broad based gate broad-based gate. Now, what I mean by broad-based gate is how will you recognize it that there will be uh, increased distance between the two heels, okay. As the patient will walk, this is one heel and this is the other heel, so th then it will be in more than normal distance, okay. So there will be increased distance between heels, okay. And number three is when you will focus on his gait, um, his foot will be pointing outwards. Okay, like normally we walk, our foot are like this, but in a taxi gait, his foot will be pointing like these outward and increased distance between this. Okay, so third, third one is feeling of falling away, other is broad based gait, and third is foot pointing outward okay so I hope that now you can recognize the gate when you have done with the gate now the most important thing is uh, that you have recognized that this is a taxia okay now you have confirmed that this is a taxia okay now what next will you do two things okay number one tandem walk ask him to walk in a straight line okay you will see that when he he has difficulty in walking in straight line he cannot walk in a straight line okay the second maneuver you can do with the gait of ataxia is you can uh, do the romberg sign now this is a very important sign okay you need to understand the romberg sign okay so in romberg you what do you do is you ask the patient to stand okay and you see that um, whether he is falling to one side or other side or not okay if patient can stand still at a place ask him to close the eyes okay now his eyes will be closed ask him to close his eyes okay and if after closing the eyes he is falling to one side or other it means that he has Romberg sign positive so what is the uh, uh, what is the significance of this Romberg is it tells us that whether ataxia is sensory or cerebral sorry okay whether sensory or cerebral if the rhomberg is positive 
it means that ataxia is sensory so how sensory you see in uh, romberg is positive if the patient is standing in, in, with his uh, foot closed and arms aligned and he is standing he is not falling but when he is asked to close his eyes he falls to the one side so it means that there is problem in uh, posterior column okay proprioception proprioception problem problem in medial longitudinal fasciculus okay and because uh, these are uh, in medial longitudinal fasciculus uh, third fourth and six nerves are connected and same similarly they it is connected to the uh, second optic nerve and uh, the vestibular nerve okay so when the patient stops seeing the optic word optic uh, um, nerves sensation is gone so patients tries to fall to the one side or the other so this confirms that this is sensory ataxia now you have confirmed that patient has ataxia okay now what will be your approach okay first thing you need to see is check the general mental state okay is the patient oriented well looking alert or not okay if the patient has ataxia and he is seems to be uh, cognitive cognition seems to be decreased okay what uh, other thing you will do you will check his tone reflex and power okay now these will decide that how what will be your diagnosis you have ataxia you have decreased cognition and your tone power reflexes are increased or decreased okay if tone power reflexes are increased this will be mixed cp spastic and ataxic okay ataxia decreased cognition tone power reflexes increased mix spastic cp and if tone power reflexes are decreased it is yes ataxic cp okay the it so ataxic top cp is hypotonic only one cp is hypotonic and that is ataxic cp okay so if you see that the child has normal cognition okay normal cognition then again check tone power and reflexes okay now if you see that these all are normal okay then you will check is romberg okay now if the romberg is positive what does that mean it means there are two conditions which has ataxia and are romberg positive okay one is hsmn hereditary sensory motor neuropathy the other is frederick ataxia okay and if the romberg is negative okay so sensory there is no sensory ataxia then you need to consider that it could be ataxia telangiectasia okay so now how will you differentiate between hmsn and frederick ataxia so to differentiate between these two there is only one test babinski babinski sign okay so in frederick babinski sign 
will be positive and in HMSN the Binsky will be negative okay so now you see it's simple you have found that patient has ataxia you will check his alertness okay and if you find out that the patient is alertness is decreased you will check his tone power reflexes if tone power reflexes are increased you have mixed cp and if they are decreased you have ataxic cp and if you find that the patient is alert and is well you will do his rhomberg okay and if the rhomberg is positive only two, two things hmsn and frederick ataxia okay and if they are negative then you could look for ataxia telangiectasia or other causes of cerebellar ataxia okay so uh, i hope this was helpful okay and uh, for more videos please do subscribe to this channel and i will be posting similar videos uh, and i have i hope this was helpful to, for you and share it and please subscribe to my youtube channel thank you